You give him this number? Good. I'll wait here at the hospital until he calls. And Cruz? Thank you. Don't do calls. Give you the number. We might have some luck. There's a guy in computer operations who happens to work at the phone company who just happens to owe Cruz a favor. All right. Well, can you give us uh, the guy who called for his father and want him to stay home? Not who. But if it was a long-distance call, we'll know where it came from, and then I'll take it from there. Well, it would have to be here from Santa Barbara, wouldn't it? Yes. And somebody who knew the brick might need a kidney transplant and that his father was going to be the donor. Well, what if he had needed it and Mr. Wallace had stayed home, you know? Well, the doctors have assured us that they would have found another kidney. Oh, thank God. Listen, you don't have any theories? I mean, obviously you've been doing some investigating for Augusta and Brick, both. It is confidential information, Kelly. Very, okay? Yeah, I know. I'm not say anything else. All I was asked to do is find out the connection between Minx and why she's so interested in, in Brick. I mean, nobody asked me anything else, like if somebody's going to try to interfere in all of this. How long till we hear? Any time now. Crew's already talked to the guy. <clears throat> well, shall we? Shall we what? Go. We're missing our 8.30 dinner reservation. Oh, oh, then I guess we should. <sighs> Don't tell me not another headache. No. What then? You nervous about looking glamorous for the first time in public? Don't make fun of me. I won't. I'll have you thinking I'm nervous too. No, you won't. <laughs> we could uh, stay here if you like, have a quiet dinner alone. There's no one in the house. It'd be just the two of us. Uh, no, I, I think we should go. All right. Good evening. Good evening. Um, Mary, may I have a word with you? Good. Looks like only Jean will be there. Lionel. Lionel. Yes. Oh, there you are. What do you think about steak au poivre? Wh why? Well, I'm giving myself a housewarming party. Don't you think I deserve one? Why? Why? You just got out of the hospital. Don't you need rest? And Relaxation? Rest and relaxation from a hospital? You... It's boring there. I don't need rest and relaxation. Have you heard from Lakin? Uh, 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 well, yes, yes. Warren's, Warren said she called and said she was okay. That's all? Uh, well, that's all he said. Little snip. Well, let's forget about all our problems right now. I want to give you a lovely evening like you gave me last night in my drab little hospital oh, room. Oh, Augusta, I, I have a meeting. I'm oh, sorry. Lionel, uh, tell them your lovely wife is recuperating and needs you. Come on, what kind of a meeting? Well, I, I promise it won't take long. Oh. Okay? Mm. 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 I'm begging, I'm begging, I'm begging, please. <laughs> oh, Lionel. Yeah. Lionel, you know something? I've been thinking about that accident. I think it knocked some sense into me. It made me rethink. I'm always... I'm always fighting off the things that are encroaching on our life and family. I forgot what I'm fighting for, and it's us, it's you, it's... Well, I know that I become very irritating and difficult to live with, but I don't think I would, and I wouldn't be so anxious if, um... if we had more time together, you know, special time, like last night, private time. I mean, I don't think that's so much to... Lionel? There's another payphone right down the hall, sir. Hello? Yeah, hang on, he's right here. Hello? Yes, Chris told me you were going to call. Did you, did you have the number? I really appreciate this. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Wait a minute. Are you sure? I... I understand. Right. Well, thank you. This is a Santa Barbara exchange. Couldn't you tell you who it belonged to, though? Didn't have to. What sort of noise? Um, I don't know. I never heard it before. From which machine? Well, I don't know which is which. It happened right after the doctor left. I looked all over for you, but I couldn't find you. 
Oh, I had shopping to do. I'm sure the night nurse will know if there's anything wrong. Well, she didn't hear it. Uh, she was out of the room for a minute. I was the only one there. Mary, I would feel so much better if you went upstairs to check on it. Oh, of course. Thank you. Okay. What is it, Gina? Um, she looks very nice. It's not what you think. Where are you going? Orient Express for dinner. Mary needs some legal advice? <sighs> Gina. You know, Mason... You never once took me out for dinner. Never. I told you, Gina. You and I have to be discreet. No one in the house can know. Yeah, I know that's what you told me, but, but why? I mean, everyone hates us already. Because we need the family's goodwill. You, if you want to keep a roof over your head, and me, if I want to accomplish anything at Capital Enterprises. I need one more vote to have a majority in my pocket. Well, do we have to be so discreet that we go on dinner dates with other, other people? Well, it might help Kelly and Ted and Eden change their mind about us. Make them think that what happened between us is all in the past. Is it, Mason? What do you think? You need me, too, you know. Whatever power you have in this business comes basically from Brandon. Of course I need you. And I miss not being with you. You're a very desirable woman, but this is the way it has to be. Can we still meet privately? Of course. You understand, don't you? I'm trying. Well, are uh, all systems go? Uh, the equipment is fine. Gina, I think that maybe what you heard was a noise from another part of the house, like a door shutting or something. A door shutting. Yes, it could be. Good night, Gina. Good night. Have a good evening. Thank you. Sweetheart. Who is that? Well, that was Uncle Mason. He was going out for a little while. I thought Rosa was putting you in bed. Why? It's not nine o'clock yet, is it? Well, I may go out for a little while, and if I do, I want to make sure you're sound asleep. Can I answer it? Do you remember what to say? I remember. Okay, go ahead. Good evening, Lionel. <laughs> Come on in. You're well, thank you, young man. Thank you. What's in the box? Oh, uh, hello, Gina. Why don't, why don't you open it and see, huh? Here, I'll help you with that. <laughs> Lionel? Huh? Don't you know you are risking the wrath of Augusta and everyone else we know by being here? Well, I'm just giving him a little gift. Is that so reprehensible? Well, he does seem to like you. It's safe for a few minutes. And besides, nobody else needs to know, right? <sighs> Well, what do you say? Thanks, Uncle Lionel. Can I call you that even if we aren't related? Sure, you can call me anything you want. What? <laughs> Oh, Brandon, sweetheart, I told you I might go out and I want you in bed. Well, listen, I, I can babysit for him. I'll even put him to bed, okay? Please, please, please. All right, all right, all right. But I want him in bed by 9.30, and I'm not going to be gone long. And when I get back home, I expect to find you sleeping. Ah, thanks, Mom. Oh, you're welcome. Where are you going, anyway? Well, I'm going to a, a party at the Orient Express. <laughs> Santana. Perfect. Mark, would you have our waiter start us off with some champagne? You know what I like. I'll see what I can do. Thank you. Well, you're smiling. Is that a good sign? Oh, this funny old song. You don't like the music? I'll complain to the management. Oh, no, it just makes me think of something. Me? No. Then I'll complain to the management. No, my, my high school prom, we had this nine-piece orchestra, Dave Prandini and his Silver Spoons, and they played music like this all night. <laughs> Did you dance and have a good time? Well, I had a good time. I went with, uh, with Howie LaFont. He's a priest now in New York City. I bet you broke his heart. Oh, no, no, we were, we were just friends. But I wore this long plaid dress that my mother made for me, and, and she picked out these really flat shoes so I wouldn't look so tall. And then she taught me to dance when she'd get home after work at night. We'd dance in the living room. Uh, she would lead, I would follow, to this, um, this favorite record she had. Um, 
You are my something, something, something. My father had that same record. Little did I know that every time he played it, you and your mother were tripping the light fantastic on your living room carpet in Ventura. Oh, yes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Still remember how? I don't know, probably. Well, I can lead, too. I, uh, might not be as good as your mother, though. Oh, I, I, I bet you will be. We'll see. Seems to be enjoying himself with Cece's little nerves. She's quite lovely in a wholesome sort of way, don't you think? Mind your own business. Oh, I know. It's hard watching them grow up and go out on dates. I suppose you're here as a chaperone, as Mason's stepmother. No, actually, Augusta, I wanted to get out of the house for a little while. And I just happened to have the perfect babysitter. Lionel. Wasn't that lucky? I knew it. No. Kelly, I shouldn't have involved you in this in the first place. You didn't. I involved myself. Now, is this the number of someone you know? <clears throat> yeah. Let me see. I know this too, Nick. Where did I see this? Whose number is it? Look, come on. Brick is my friend too. And like, Amy is my sister-in-law. I think after what the four of us went through with Jack Lee's cousin, I would be as close to them as you would feel, yeah? Will you tell me? How do you know this number? Because I have dialed it before. I have that number in my address book at home. That's where it is? That's where I saw it. Uh, in a book by Ted's phone. No. The locker? Then the woman that called Mr. Wallace was Augusta. My client. Thank you for the dance. Thank you. You know, you, uh, you have a civilizing influence on me. I do? Yes, and I like it. I'm not doing anything. No, I don't know. I just, uh, I feel very calm. The whole evening, the champagne, the music, the dancing, right down to the tablecloth. Every, everything seems very new and perfect. I am so glad. I was afraid. Don't be afraid. Anything. I'm not a very interesting person, Mason. I mean, my conversation doesn't really sparkle. Yeah, but you do. What? You afraid that uh, you'd bore me? Well, I, I wasn't going to put it like that. I'll tell you something, Mary. Everyone in the world harbors a secret suspicion that the more you get to know them, the less you'll like them. I'm, uh, I'm no different. What were you like before you went into the convent? Same as I am now, only younger. Uh, a little more awkward. Oh, I'll tell you, a restaurant like this would have had me running for the hills and, you know, two forks. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I'd known you then. Oh, no. No, you wouldn't have liked me very much. We wouldn't have had much in common. Well, I know you wouldn't have liked me, but... Why? Uh, I don't know. I guess I didn't like myself much then. You turned out all right. You turned out all right. What are you doing tomorrow, then? Um, working at the clinic. That's turning into a second job. Are you trying to get rich? It's volunteer. Oh, how about the next night? Working at the clinic. You are uh, trying to tell me you'd like to take things slowly? There's nothing to take slow or fast. I mean, we're just having dinner. Something has to be done, Santana. It's time. Augusta, if I had known that's why you called me, I might not have agreed to meet you. Why? I'm only offering to help. Has your sister found some legal way of nullifying the adoption? Never mind, Julia. Never mind the law. Going through channels is an iffy proposition. What's the matter with you? I thought you wanted Brandon back. I do want Brandon. But even more than that, I want what's best for him. Do you think that blonde barracuda that Cece's married to is best for him? Of course I don't, Augusta. You know that. 
But the truth remains that Brandon loves Gina. For the moment. And poisoning his mind against poison. her. Poison? Well, who's saying anything about poisoning? Enlightenment is the word. I'm trying to open that boy's up to that little witch he calls mommy. He's rightfully yours. He belongs with you. And far away from Lionel. Isn't that right, Augusta? That's all you really care about? Well, yes. I'd expect you to follow through in your bargain. Take Brandon and get out of town. Well, I think maybe I'll just wait around and see what Julia finds No, out. we can't wait. You've got to make a decision tonight, otherwise it's not going to work. Augusta, Gina is right about one thing. She is the only mother that Brandon has ever known. Now, how can I shatter his illusions about the one person that he trusts? Excuse me, may I have an another clip soda? Please? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, I'll be right back. I will call Julia right now, and if she says, as I know she will, that she's found nothing to help you get Brandon legally, then will you consider? Well, what have we here? Don't look so guilty, Sandy. Good evening, Gina. Have you two been swapping tales of woe? Oh, poor me, I'm losing my husband. Poor me, I've lost my child. I'll just make that call and be right back. This is so unlike the happy scene I just left at my house. With Brandon and Uncle Lionel. Isn't that cute? He calls him Uncle. Excuse me. Did you want something, Jim? I don't suppose my name came up in the conversation, did it? How is Brandon? I haven't seen him in a while. I was going to be even longer than that. I'm looking for a good boarding school to put him in. A boarding school? Gina, he's too young. He's just a little boy. And far too impressionable to be exposed to what's going on in that house and to people like you. He's being pulled four ways at once. Gina, you can't be serious. Even you're the one that always says all Brandon needs is a home and a mother. Well, he'll still have both. But what he won't have is a lot of people around him who think all he needs is them. Well, it's just as I thought. Julie said she's working on it. Santana, what's the matter? What did Gina say? Nothing. I've just been thinking, Augusta. If you have a plan, I'd like to hear it. Good. She's here. In that way, Gina will be putting her head in her own noose. It's simple and foolproof. Now, Santana, don't back down on me again. We're trying to get Gina to show her true colors. It's not like we're trying to make up Brandon's mind for him. I still don't like it. But you agree it should be done. Then I should meet you at the cap well. Good, yes. Now look, remember, I will use my car phone. I will ring once. And then when I'm going in the drive... Now you better go. Gina's coming for you. Well, what did you say to her? Ha, <sighs> she's just a very selfish woman. I could have told you that. Well, I can't blame her. Nobody likes to hear someone else's troubles. Troubles? Oh, you mean Lionel. It's very difficult to have no one... Never mind. No one to talk to? Well, yes, I guess that's what I meant. But this is ridiculous. You don't care about what happens to me. I mean, you don't know anything about a husband who... A husband who lies and sneaks around behind your back? Who's fascinated with Sophia? Of course I know all about her. Maybe you do. I remember Cece treating you abysmally. Yes, but I've finally risen above it all. How? Well, you have to look out for yourself. You can't trust anybody. Yes, but don't you sometimes want to confide in someone and, and, and lean on them? Yes, sometimes. I do remember when Cece was drawing up a divorce settlement against you and you were very hurt and you needed to talk. Yes, but Augusta, we're not friends. But I suppose we are in the same boat, aren't we? If you want, you can talk to me, and who am I going to tell anyway? Well, I'd love to, but not here, you know? We could go back to my house. I told Lionel to leave by 9.30. Oh, I'd really appreciate that. All right, I'll just sign the check at the bar. Oh, Gina, thank you, really. No, Augusta, I'm not as horrible a person as everyone thinks. Don't leave yet, Augusta. Nick, what are you doing here? What have you got me involved in? I don't have time for this. You told me you were suspicious of Rick, that you didn't like him. Was it an accident or a planned convenience? Look, I was injured too. How do you think I got this way? It was an accident. Was it? I wonder. What is that supposed to mean? Brandon? I didn't hear you come in. I came in the back way. Uh-huh. You're not supposed to be here, are you? Are you? 
Yeah, Br uh, Gina gave me permission to put Brandon to bed. You don't seem surprised to see me. Why should I be? We both take every opportunity we can to get an uninterrupted minute with him. I just tucked him in. Lucky you. Yeah. It's not... I know that Gina didn't give you permission to see your own son, and never having known Channing, it must be very hard for you. Sometimes I imagine what it would have been like if I hadn't given him up. You were very young. You thought you had no choice. <laughs> I even let myself dream that it was all a mistake and I could get him back if I just knew how. It is a dream, Santana. Brandon adores Gina. Now? But when he realizes, I mean, when he gets older but and Santana, he sees... Santana, Santana, listen to me. Brandon is a very loving and loyal child. Whatever else Gina may be. I mean, she's made Brandon very happy. Bakersfield. Why would I know anyone in Bakersfield? You were there when we talked about contacting Brick's father. Oh. There were dozens of people there, nurses, doctors, interns. The woman who called the hospital was not on the staff there. Brick's doctor checked. There were hundreds of people there. He couldn't have asked everyone. No one knew how well the damaged kidney was functioning until after the phone call. Well, it wasn't me. Why would I stop Brick from having a transplant? You tell me. As far as I'm concerned, you're the only one who could have made that phone call. You were there. You heard the situation. I'll even bet my first report was enough help for you to find Mr. Wallace. You can consider yourself fired, and if you ever breathe a word of these ridiculous suspicions to anyone else, so help me. I have proof, Augusta, cold, hard proof that call was made from your house. I am leaving. And if you dare to try to implicate me with this imaginary plot, with your imaginary proof, you will never work in this town again or anywhere else as far as I'm concerned. Excuse me. Mr. Wallace, I don't know anything yet for sure. But maybe you can help me. Can you tell me what the woman sounded like? Uh, bossy. Like mostly she was used to telling people what to do. That's why it didn't occur to me to ask her if she was a nurse or a doctor. She sounded like one. What did she sound old or young or in between, kind of? Well, she wasn't a teenager. Uh, at least that's all I can remember. But her voice was kind of muffled. Yeah, that, that I remember distinctly. Like, like she wasn't talking straight to me. Sir, where can I reach you? Oh, I'm staying at this uh, motel. But I won't be there tonight. Where are you going to be? Oh, where do you think? I'll be in that chair right next to my son. Maybe some good is going to come from this after all. Mm-hmm. Well, it's nice to see people become close again after so long, huh? We missed dinner, and I can't think on an empty stomach. And the Orient Express is still open. Uh-huh. Do you know of anybody who might want to join me? Let me see. <laughs> You're doing very well for a dancephobe. What's a dancephobe? A victim of dancephobia. Oh, fear of dancing? Right. It's a terrible affliction. It starts off with an aversion to romantic music and a uh, tendency to say no when asked to dance. And then? Well, the next thing you know, a person can't even stand the sight of a radio. They tremble at old Fred Astaire movies on <laughs> television. First thing you know, they've taken a night job at a clinic just in case somebody asks them out for dinner and you know what. Mason, the music stop. Well, you see, you may be on the road to recovery after all. <clears throat> Tell me, what would I have to have and how badly would I have to have it in order to come visit you at the clinic tomorrow Oh, I'd, I'd throw you right out. It's strictly for people who can't pay. Ah, you know, thank you. Sometimes I wish you weren't quite so unselfish. Oh, it has nothing to do with that. No, I discovered a long time ago, when I was a teenager, that having some sort of volunteer work just makes me feel better about myself. And about the world in general. So you see, it's, it's actually very selfish when you think about it. You should try it. 
I don't have time. I've made a personal mission out of you. You're very much like your father, aren't you? How can you say that? You don't know my father. I know his reputation. Strong, direct, won't take no for an answer. In fact, there are times when I'm in his room when I feel something... I'm sorry. No, go ahead. You feel what? His power. How hard he's fighting in this silent battle for his life. Ah, uh, yes, the indomitable spirit of C.C. Capwell. I know all about it. Boy, it must have been hard for you to grow up in his shadow. Well, this isn't clinic night, Mary. I'm sorry. It's none of my business. It's just, I keep getting the impression from your family that there are bad feelings between you and him. The family talks too much. Especially Gina. Gina's very fond of you. You know, I'm really developing a lot of admiration for Kelly and Eden. Why is that? They are so self-assured. You know, I see them at the house, Eden with, with Cruz and Kelly with that photographer, and they're just so comfortable. You mean with men? Yeah. More so than you? Well, you know, they, they don't flirt exactly, but they're not embarrassed about being admired. and They were proud and... Sexy. I, I guess... And you envy that? Uh, not that particularly. Good. So sex appeal isn't something you can work at. It's part of whatever a person happens to be, man or woman. You already have it. I do. Like it or not. Well, then I guess I may as well like it. You may as well. I sure do. Boarding school, Gina said that. To get him away from all of us. But Brandon's only 67. Exactly what I said. And she told me that it was none of my business. Well, I, I wouldn't presume to tell Gina how to raise her son. I mean, at boarding school, it's a whole year. Away from all of us and everything that Brandon knows. Well, listen, I think it's an unwise decision. I'll talk to Gina about it. Uh -huh. Thank you, but Lionel, don't tell her that I told you. I won't. Good night. Good night. She doesn't know how I'm Santana, huh? Yeah, Brandon! Hi. Couldn't get to sleep. Did Lionel leave? He sure did, sweetheart. Gosh, we asked fun. He knows all kinds of things. And now you're here. <laughs> Mom lets me stay up when I have company. Oh, she does. Well, then maybe you can stay up with me and then we can play for a while instead. Oh, yeah. I'm sure it's okay. <laughs> I'll get it. I know how to. Uh, that's funny. Brandon, I know a game. What game? Well, it's kind of like hide-and-seek, only this one's much better, because we both get to hide. Really, we both try to find each other? You got it. Only you can't go far, or you won't be able to find me. Okay. Okay. Are you ready? You mark, set, go. Are you ready? Um, not quite, but you better be real, real quiet, Brandon, or I'll be able to find you. Lionel? Good. She put Brandon to bed on time and went home. Can I get you a brandy or something? Yes, uh, that would be lovely. Why don't I just do that for you, Gina? You can go up and check on Cece. No, it's all right. The night nurse is with him. Well, I thought since you've been out all evening, you'd like to look in on him. Well, why? There's nothing I can do for him, really. I mean, the uh, machines take care of him completely. I know, but I thought for... Sentimental reasons, <laughs> you know. Augusta, are you joking? I mean, why should I even care if Cece lives or dies?
it's more cozy in the living room. No, no, let's stay here. Gina, I'm surprised at you. I thought maybe you had a little more feeling for seats than that. Well, Augusta, you surprised me. I thought you wanted to talk about your problem. Besides, you know how I feel about Cece. Why are you harping on this? Well, I know how you felt when you were angry. I'm always angry when I think about what that man has done to me. Oh, you can't wish him dead. I didn't say that. I just said I had reason to wish him. I didn't know you hated him so much. Why shouldn't I hate him? He never even cared about me. It was Sophia. Always Sophia. But now he hates her, too, now that he found out that Channing wasn't no, even... No, but at so... the beginning, it was quite good to you, wasn't it? Good to me? Augusta, he just toyed with me. He played with my affections, and then, then he threw me aside once he got what he wanted, which was Brandon in his family. Now he doesn't even care about Brandon anymore, either. He told me so. Doesn't really care about anybody. Not unless he thinks he can use them. I will tell you this. If C.C. should get up out of that bed tomorrow... Neither Brandon nor I will have anything to be happy about. I would. I'd be happy. Brandon. Mommy, why did you say those things about Daddy? He loves me. I know he does. Well, of course he loves you, sweetheart. Come here. No. If you hate Dad, then you must hate me. Ooh, Brandon, you know better than that. I didn't mean any of that, baby. What are you doing out of bed? I stayed up play on purpose. I always played a game with Santana. Santana? I'm glad because now I know you were just pretending. You planned this. Both of you. Brandon! Sweetheart! Brandon! I have never been so ashamed of myself in my life. <sighs> Save the crocodile tears. It worked, didn't it? Another session, you never know what you would have gotten. Augusta, didn't you see him? Didn't you hear how hurt he was? How did I ever let you talk me into this? Because it was what you wanted, and you know it. No, Brandon, no. Leave me alone. I want to stop. Sweetheart, please stop it. Brandon, honey, stop it. Why don't you tell Dad the things that you said about him? Well, I, I just couldn't. Because you're scared to. No, honey. It's because it's just not true. Why did you say them? Well, now, Brandon, don't you say things you don't mean when you're angry, hmm? Not things like that. Do you remember that lady downstairs? Mrs. Lockridge. Yes, that's right. Well, you see, she and Santana, and you're not going to want to hear this, but you're a big boy now, and, oh, baby, it's the truth. They are so jealous that, that I have such a beautiful boy, and that he has such a good father that loves him so much, that sometimes I'll just say those things so they'll leave us alone and go away. But there's still no reason to say that you hate Dad. No, there isn't. I wasn't thinking. Oh, honey, I'm sorry. I think you meant it. Damn you, CC. It's a brick saver. I played him with the call came from Augustus' house. I didn't yet. His father was there. And I'm still having a little trouble believing it myself. Yeah, so am I. I mean, Augusta is not one of my favorite people, but this is going to look too far. Let's forget about Augusta. I don't want to lose my appetite. You know, you make a great partner. Of course I do. Mm-hmm. As a private eye? Uh, that too. A partner at what, though? Would you do me the honor, mademoiselle? Dance partner? Yeah, I know the page is so hot, and I know it sounds like it's not too exciting, but just wait. <laughs> Don't I, deny I, it, you were there. I'm not denying anything. Was Sophia there? I went to see Brandon. Yeah, and you lied about it. I didn't lie. Look, if, if I... If I hadn't said that I was going to a meeting, oh. you would have become irrational, which you have. Was she there or wasn't she there? I don't know whether she was there. I went to see my grandson, and frankly, I had a wonderful time. Do you have to flaunt that in front of me? Don't you have any feelings for me at all? Uh, of course I do. 
Oh, gosh. All right. L l l let me put it this way. Um, if I had been married before, had children by that marriage, w would you uh, fly into a rage every time I went to see them? Of course not. Oh. You didn't marry Sophia. No, I did not. And I want you to write that on a blackboard a hundred times. Lionel did not marry Sophia. Lionel would did not marry Sophia. Would you have done if you could have? If I could have, I could have if I'd wanted to. I could have asked you for a divorce and proposed to her, but I didn't. This child is making our life miserable. No, 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 Augusta, you are. Can't you see the pain you are putting me through? Can't you think about me for once? I think about you constantly. The solution to all this is in your hands, Augusta. You know something? I like the life I have. I don't want a different wife or a different anything. But Brandon is a fact of that life. A biological fact. We can't do anything about it. I don't know, maybe if you got to know him better or something. I... Don't answer that. Is the door locked? I don't know. <sighs> so you thought you could just walk away? And now Brandon is so hurt he won't even speak to me. And it's all her fault. How was I supposed to know Brandon could hear us? What? You and Santana planned the whole thing to happen. Santana, the fact that we were talking in a restaurant, that can't help it if she's sneaking around your house. Wait a minute. I, I saw Santana there, but she didn't say anything about Augusta. Well, of course she wouldn't. Well, well Gina, exactly what did you say about uh, CC that got Brandon so, so, so upset? Yes, Gina, be sure to tell everything. I said exactly what you goaded me into saying. You said you didn't care if he lived No, by. I did not. No, you're just looking for someone to blame. Don't come to me with your pangs of conscience. If you feel guilty, and you should, that poor child. Gina, I really think you must be mistaken about Augusta. Lionel, after all these years, don't you know there's no scheme too complicated for your jealous wife to dream up? Augusta would never hurt a child intentionally. That much, I know. Lionel, you're wrong. I thought you cared about Brandon. I do. I don't want anybody abusing that child. But I can't stand here and listen to somebody abuse my wife, either. Now, maybe you should go, huh? Augusta, you may have fooled Lionel, but I'm not just going to let this drop. If you ever try to come between me and my son again, I'll... I'm not accusing you, Augusta. But do you know anything about that? For the 25th time, no. But I do think there's some poetic justice in it. You're a pretty good partner yourself. That's what I keep telling you. <laughs> Listen, I know I promised not to talk about work while we were at dinner, but dinner's not here yet, okay? What are you going to do about Augusta? I mean, if she is the one that called Blake's father. We still don't have enough proof for a formal accusation. We, we don't have enough from the phone company computers? She can always say that somebody else made the call from her house. Well... Come on, I mean, Brick's father gave a perfect description of her voice. I mean, it was uh, commanding, what do you say, and not young. I think what we have to do next is find a way for Mr. Wallace to help us identify her voice. But that's for tomorrow. I have a different agenda for tonight. Oh? Mm-hmm. I really like being with you today. Well, good. I, uh, I liked it, too. Why is it that things are so easy between us when we're working on a project together, like a case or a book? Hmm? But the moment the subject turns to us, it's like we're walking in quicksand all of a sudden. I think because we did things backwards. How do you mean? I think we got a little too serious with each other before knowing each other. You know how I feel about that. I know you. I think you know me, too. Also, I think, because I'm chicken. <laughs> oh, well, I think I've heard that before. Yeah, well, I'm trying. Okay, I am. Uh, let's see. Uh, you're the chicken? No, no, I'm the veal. She's the chicken. Thank you for a very nice evening. Thank you for a very nice evening. You know, I think you'll find that ordinary manners don't cover this kind of situation. Thank you. Thank you. And then what? Then, uh, good night. Good night. This is, um, part of the etiquette, too. Well, oh, wait, 
Um, it, it wasn't a nice evening. It was much more than nice. I don't know when I have talked so much or laughed about so many things or felt like... like... I'm going to kiss you. No, you're not. It's part of the non-etiquette also. You know, I, uh, I don't usually kiss ears on the first date. You know, it's very late for me. I, I think I really should go to bed. Um, good night. I'm sorry. You know, I'm used to having doors closed in my face, but not my own. I'm, I'm sorry. You're doing fine. Let's uh, take it again from the top. Thank you for a lovely evening. No, thank you. And good night. Good night. Well, shall I uh, see you to your door? Upstairs? All right. But no more good nights. Well, how was your dinner? Fine. I'll see you in the morning, Gina. Don't forget, Santa Barbara is with us once again tomorrow afternoon, here on Sky One. In half an hour, it's the Brady Bunch, but stay with us now, as after the break, we've Wife of the Week, and Christopher Biggins does the honours. See you soon.